Perry put South Dakota higher education in the national spotlight through his dedication to improving education across the state. When he retired as executive director of the South Dakota Board of Regents in 2009, his 15 years of service made him the longest serving state higher education executive officer in the nation. To this day, his service is the longest of any South Dakota chief executive in the region's history. His tenure was marked by significant growth in service to non-traditional students, an increase in graduate degrees and research programs, enhancements in technology environment for students, competitive salary improvement for faculty, and the transition to Division I athletics. Evidence of Perry's impact on South Dakota higher education is found anywhere one turns on a university campus today. It's difficult for me to comprehend that a downriver Central Missouri boy is here among these outstanding South Dakotans this evening. My personal congratulations to each of you. 28 years ago, I had a great life. I was a tenured full professor with a comfortable administrative position at a good university in Indiana. At 51 years of age, I had never been to South Dakota, and I knew only one South Dakotan, SDSU Professor Bob Burns, who had been a graduate school colleague. I traded that for an opportunity filled with unknowns an opportunity that led to South Dakota becoming our home. I am truly grateful to the nine members of the Board of Regents who gave me the opportunity to lead. Two of them are here this evening, Pat Lebrun and Jim Hart, so you can blame them. Uh, they probably did not know what they were doing. And I confess, there were several occasions in the journey where I wasn't sure I knew what I was doing either. The regents, when they hired me, handed me a map of what they wanted done. They called this my performance objectives. Improve legislative and public support for higher education, strengthen the role of the universities in the state's economic development, create a contemporary technology plan, enhance preparedness of the state's workforce, expand access to higher education, and gain efficiencies in our system. With longevity as my partner, we made advances. And at the end of the journey, there was a better prepared workforce with appropriate degrees and skills, a culture of research and innovation supporting the state's economy, technology in all facets of our work and service, adjusting to that new world of laptop computers and the internet, access to higher education throughout the state, especially for the non-traditional college-aged populations, and a unified system where each of the independent individual institutions work together in delivering their educational service. These things were never easy. Advances were made because I got to work with 26 supportive regents, regents who allowed me to lead while meeting their expectations. And I'm thankful to those regents, Regent Van Huysen and all of your colleagues for that opportunity. Advances were made because I had the opportunity and the privilege to work with incredible presidents and superintendents. They took every opportunity we had and made them successful. Advances were made because I had the opportunity to work with really talented and dedicated staff. One of my colleagues described my staff as the best state higher education staff in the nation. This staff included Janelle Tolman and Janice Minder and Travis Rendell, who are here this evening. Advances were made because I had the opportunity to work with three governors, their staffs, and hundreds of state legislators. These were the best of public servants, and two of them are among the people here tonight being honored. Advances were made because we were open to informal dialoguing with our partners. These included morning education coffees with the 12 K-12 community leaders, 
late afternoon wine cabinet sessions with the governor's staff and secretaries always after five. Round tables with elected officials, community leaders, and higher education personnel. These were no agenda, no holds barred conversations that produced many successful initiatives over the years. Many of your pardon, my partners in these are here tonight and you know who you are and I hope you know how very important you were in this journey. In retirement life, the good hearts of my community have given me the opportunities to raise mon funds for the Boys and Girls Club locally and to serve in the state legislature. Let me conclude with this. To achieve the mission of the South Dakota Hall of Fame, to have a culture of excellence, we need to have quality educational opportunities from preschool through graduate education for every South Dakotan so that they can become a champion of excellence in their life. I am so very grateful for having a terrific supporting partner on this journey and the very best of families. And I'm grateful that many of them are here this evening. Thank you to Ann Thompson, who has been a colleague and a friend since the very first week I set foot in South Dakota. Thank you to Janelle Tolman for being the nominator for this occasion. And thank you to the South Dakota Hall of Fame for including me with this special group of South Dakotans. <laughs>